Hi guys, welcome back to part six of our messing about with the uh, shovel head primary. Now since uh, the last video I've bolted on the regulator and I put the chain on and a couple of minor little things like that because they are straightforward bolt-ons. Uh, so we'll pick up where we left off apart from there. So we're going to refit the primary side, compensate sprocket, clutch etc etc today. Uh, as well as a mystery regarding the compensator sprocket, which I've not been able to fathom yet, but anyway. It's waiting for us, let's go and get stuck in and uh, see what we can do. Right, the inner primary had the knack of bearing, if you recall. So we need to get that swapped and the seal put in place. It's got to go in from this side. Underneath is a cast boss that it sits in, which is going to be supported under that piece of wood, so there's no chance of the case being strained. But to get it in, we're going to need some heat. So let me just go and get the torch. Because, uh, it was tight coming out. And I suspect it's going to be tight going back in as well. There we go. Went in all right when it straightened up a bit more. Right, good. So how hot is that? Yeah. Not massively so. So we can put the uh, seal in, which also came with the kit. And is also quite tight. So I'll put a slightly bigger head on the driver. Yes. There we go, that's flush. Right, I think we're ready to fit. There's a plate that goes on there between there and the starter, I must remember that. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Right, the case is ready to go. I tried fitting the uh, case saver that goes on the starter motor. It doesn't fit, or at least it doesn't fit this starter motor. It was very, very hard to get on, and then when I did get it on, it contacts the uh, body, the moulding of the body of the starter motor, leaving it well proud of the... So, the bike's gone this long without it, so I'll just leave it. The O-ring that seals the case to the engine is perfectly good. Nothing wrong with it at all, so that's staying. So... In theory, that should go on. Seems to be seated. Right. So it's our lock wide bolts, four nuts. Should be two at the front, there's only one. I've got another one on order. 
That will come later, that can be fitted at any time. So that all looks okay. Everything seems to be sitting down without any rock or strain. So, stick those back in then. So we have a selection of washers. Too big, four small, does that go in there? No, it doesn't. Does that one go in there? Very nearly. Should have paid more attention when we took them apart. That's definitely in there. Yep, there we go. The two, yes. The two. bolts with the holes in. I kept the washers on when I took it apart. So the others for the nuts. I shall tighten those down and bring it back in a second once I've found the correct torque setting. Right, I've taken all the uh, bolts down very, very carefully, moving one to the other to make sure they're not putting any strain on the case. And then uh, they're all torqued up to uh, the setting in the handbook workshop manual, which was uh, 18 to 24 pounds, I think. So, oh, and I made sure that that still turns freely, which it does. So really, I think we can move on to fitting the uh, starter motor and things, which I can't show you because you've got to go in from that side and it is only two bolts. I'll put the plate washer behind with the seal in. Um, oh no, I'm lying to you. There's one other thing, these. Now, they need lock wiring. Now, to be honest, I would have thought that uh, I need a sealant. But I'll do that now, I'll think about it. Uh, I would have thought that a modern locking, thread locking compound probably would sort that out, but it says to lock wire them, so lock wire them I will. So let me go and find a bit and a bit of sealant for that tube. Right, you've got some stainless lock wire. And it says over the top for the top one. It's going to go down to about there and see if this will work. Difficult to uh, get it started. Out there, I think. Right. Too long now. Oh dear. Okay. Let's see how we get on. Yep.
go, not the neatest lot wiring in the world, but it will do. I'll just make sure that doesn't uh, touch anything. So that's wired the way it says in the manual. So hopefully that'll do. So, starter motor, which I won't show you, as I said, because I've got to go around the other side. It's only two bolts. So I'll do that and bring you back. The starter's in. So we've got to get a drive in the starter, uh, which is going to be difficult. It'll be in your way as usual. Just quite awkward lighting this, I'm afraid. My apologies, but it's quite dark in here at this time of year. So that's got to go in there. There we are. There we are. So then that's got to go in there, and it's a, a spacing plate and two bolts, which are very, very inaccessible. I'm going to have to get a light. I remember them being a pain when they came off. Right, so Woodruff Key and Primary Chain. Right, I'll put tractor grease on the rollers uh, and pushed it in and then wiped the excess as much off as I can anyway to give them some lubrication and also check the uh, face with slight taper and there's no damage to the woodruff key slot or anything like that so there we go that helps stick it right good so clutch center nut which will look up up on the bench right, the clutch center nut also has a seal in the middle of it which uh, my little tool won't get into Oh, and that's not going to go either. So, I'll just stick it in the vise. See if I come out now. I've got to use a screwdriver because in my seal tool. Won't go in. There we go. Remains of old bits of uh, crap in there. Get that out, shall we? And then the kit had a new... In fact, the kit had two seals in it. Not sure what the difference is. Nothing. Okay, so that should just push in. It. Right, it's a lock washer with a tab which goes in the uh, slot for the woodruff key. I'll just put a little bit of heavy grease on the back because otherwise it stands a real risk of dropping out whilst I'm trying to do it up, which obviously would be bad news. Fiddly little so and so. There we go, and that's it stuck to the hub. And then our clutch nut, which was left hand thread if I remember correctly. 
Let me just get a socket and I'll run that up by hand. I'm not going to tighten it fully yet until I get the chain up. Is that the one? Yes. So we will get that seated but not tightened. Now, after the first video I was told that the push rod wasn't meant to come out of there uh, because it's attached to an oil plug at the back. Now, my only option is to take the end cover off the gearbox on the other side or give it a go. So, I think we'll just give it a go and hope that nothing's moved. I've oiled the uh, push rod. It's gone back where it was. I'm tempted just to try that because that is where it was effectively. Uh, I think I'll put it together, try the clutch and see whether it works correctly as it was. If it doesn't I can then take the, uh, the other cover off and find out what's going to the push rod. It's not a big deal. I don't even need to put the outer cover on. So yeah, I think that's what we'll do. So we need to tighten that in a minute. Yeah, that's it, tighten that. So we need to fit the chain, don't we? Right, that should go over the clutch hub. That's got to in there. Are we anywhere near? No. Fit over the front sprocket, like so. Yes, right. So that's on. That's on. So now we've got to work out how to adjust that. Now you, there's no way you're able to see this, but there's a sliding nut which goes up the back of the. Uh, adjuster there which has got to meet that bolt and it's not very easy to get at well so that's got to go like that and that's going to be tightened up with that one Again, that's not doesn't got to be fully tightened yet. I need to get everything on properly, and then I'll adjust the primary chain. But at least it's connected. So that's on. That's ready. That's on. So we need our compensator nut, which has a matching piece to that. That and in the cover, yep, and that goes over there, and that should just screw in. Now, what's troubling me is a quick look in the workshop manual that I've got for this it says that this compensator nut has to be tightened up to 400 pound foot, which is an astronomical figure. Now, two things worry me about that. One, I haven't got a torque wrench that reads anywhere near. 400 foot. I don't think I've ever had a fitting in my life I've had to do up that takes that sort of torque. So that's a problem. And the second thing is, I sincerely doubt that I have the physical strength 
to tighten something up to £400. So, I think I have a half inch impact, which is very powerful, the snap on one, or a Chicago pneumatic, I can't remember, CP or snap on, I can't remember which one it was, either way. And I've used that to attach crankshaft nuts and things on vans and a few lorries, seven and a half tonners, stuff like that. And it's always been up to the job. So I'm going to impact that on. This one, I'll have to check the torque setting. I think it's only about 80, in which case we'll have a go at talking that properly. But there's no way I'm going to manage that, so I'm just going to have to gun it on and hope for the best. Uh, yeah, I literally have no option. Okay, let's keep going. I've just checked my other manual, which is a climber. And it says the front compensator nut should be done to 80 to 100. So that's more believable than the other manual I read. Anyway, I'll probably impact the uh, clutch centre with my 3 8 So we'll just crack up the compressor. Out of interest, we'll just see how much effort this takes to go up to 80. And I'm definitely weakening. Okay, that wasn't too bad. So, the problem now is, how do we lock their centre? How do we lock the centre? Because you can't get at it once the clutch plates are on, once the clutch centre's on. Right, for this one, I'm just going to use the 3 8 gun in a step up and just gently chatter it because it's not, uh, it's not mega tight. Right, so that's to talk. That's not, but it should be tight. So let's get the clutch plates in. And then we'll adjust the chain. Right, I've degreased the plates, checked if the metal ones are flat, so you just need to go in. The mart out, which is helpful. So. so I'll just put the stack in and bring it back because there's no point watching me fit each individual clutch plate. Then our clutch cover. Let's go with those three studs. Oh, it's off centre, isn't it? It's off. Should have noticed that. Anyway, it's uh, asymmetrical, is the word I'm looking for. And then our clutch nuts. Same, I think that needs to be undone.
Right, just did the clutch up approximately where it needs to go with a little bit of slack, which is tiny, isn't that? Yeah, that feels pretty much like it did before, nice and light. It seems to be lifted evenly as well. I will readjust it when I've uh, ridden it for a bit. So we need to then adjust our how much slot there should be in that. Right, I've had a quick look in the manual, can't find a figure. That's probably not too bad. I'll see if we can find what it says in the original workshop manual to go back in the house. I'll just move that up a little bit more. The other thing is, as I was looking at this, to compensate a nut figure, which is uh, much lower than the one I saw, is the 1978 one. That's probably not bad. Uh, I will double check. That's not excessive and it's not too tight either. Right, so that's on, that's on, that's on. That's adjusted. The clutch works at the handlebar this evenly. I'll double check now for a figure for this because that is peculiar that it says 78 on it doesn't mention the other one in, in the climber I'll put it up what I can find I would have thought that was tight enough but anyway so that's all tight that's tight that's tight that's tight that's tight so really it's put the washer on that and the cover can go back on and the drain plug, of course, for the bottom of the chain case, which I'll put down there so don't forget. So that came off there like that. That went on there. I'm not sure if you meant to reuse these, but it seem, seems to be in perfectly good condition. I don't see why not. But I won't put it on just yet, as I say, because I'd better go and double check that compensating that figure. So, we shall leave it there for one second. Right, I've uh, checked the uh, values inside, as I said I would. You probably noticed the cover's back on. Uh, that's because the figures I gave earlier are the ones that are shown in the manuals. So I decided to uh, check Donny Peterson's book the uh, Unauthorised Technical Guide to the Shovelhead, Volume 2, which is full of technical info. And under the uh, compensator, it says, uh, I'll sort of paraphrase as I go through, this is a massive nut. Uh, a specified torque for this nut is anywhere from 80, well, he says foot pounds, which would be pounds foot, which is too little in my opinion, up to £400 for. Harley Davidson was all over the place for changing torque values. Uh, da -da -da -da. Harley riders of the day used pry bars, tube extensions, etc, etc, to try and tighten it up as they could. We didn't have enough money for compressors and impact guns, but they are the easy way. So, bearing in mind that I have got a compressor, and uh, I have got an impact gun, I just chatted it up with that. It's a snap-on gun. He says he generally tightens from a 250 to 300 pound foot, which is about what the uh, snap-on gun will have tightened him to. He also says it'll make an awful noise if the nut starts coming loose, so you get plenty of warning if you haven't done it up tight enough, which frankly is uh, good enough for me. So I just chatted it up and bunged the case on. I didn't bother filming that because it's done in seconds. It's only uh, eight screws for the case, I think and a couple for the footboards, done and dusted. So that's it for the primary side. I have got other things to do on the other side, um, which will end up in a video, I'm sure, at some point soon. And not immediately, I've got other stuff to do. Um, 
I have a quart of uh, oil to go in the primary because it's running wet and I've got uh, some heavy duty 85140 gearbox oil to go in the gearbox when it's ready to go. I'm not in a rush because it's freezing cold here again now. The uh, temperate spell has passed. It's hovering around freezing at the minute and we've got sleet and snow in the forecast for next week. So no big rush. This old girl's not going out in the snow or the sleet or anything like that. So that's it for the minute. So thank you for watching. Please call back to the garage. There will be more on the Honda coming up very soon. There may be another bike to show you, uh, which you've not seen yet. Um, but I'm having trouble extricating that from where it's stored. So just pop back, see what's going on. Please subscribe if you haven't. And thank you all for watching. It's much appreciated.